Praise the Lord. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing okay this morning. Hope everybody's uh, bright eyed and bushy tailed. Get this computer going. Praise the Lord. There we go. Amen. Hope everybody's doing well. It is what we say yesterday. To do well is to do the will of God, to obey God, to follow God. That's doing well. Yesterday we looked at Cain and Abel, chapter number four, Genesis chapter four. And the Lord said uh, to Cain, he said, uh, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? His sacrifice was rejected. His sacrifice was refused. And he told Cain, if thou doest well, then you can be accepted too. If you do well, your sacrifice will be received. Your sacrifice will be respected. The Bible said the Lord hath not respect unto his offering. His offering was of works. Abel's offering was by faith. And by faith, he did what he had heard that God had said. He obeyed the word of God. That's what faith is, is taking God at his word and doing what God said, doing it God's way. That's, that's faith. Faith is not some wild leap in the dark. Faith is not some uh, grasp at a straw and hope this works. Well, I'm, I'm just going to finance this car and uh, by faith, I'm going to believe God's going to pay for it. That's not faith, that's foolishness. <laughs> that's not faith, that's foolishness. Some people say there's a fine line between faith and foolishness. That's a lie. That's, that's not true. Listen to me. <laughs> Share this with your neighbors. Send this to somebody that, that, that needs it. Faith is not even close to foolishness. Faith is absolute trusting God to do what God said he was going to do. And that's never foolish. <laughs> that's the most safe thing you can do is trust God. And yet the world makes it look like trusting God is completely just a, a, a leap and hope somebody's going to catch me. That's not faith. Faith is trusting God. Faith is taking God at his word. The dog is after the squirrels again. <laughs> Good morning, gal. Here. Get away from the front door. Right here. No, oh, ma'am. Get up here. Say hey to the people. Say hey. Hello. Say Hello. You okay? Now you go lay down. You hear me? You stop all that. You're a pretty girl. Yeah, you're the best girl ever. Get up here. Come on, get up here. Jump. Let's see if we can get her to do it. Come on, get up here. Come on, get up here. Come on. Right here. Come on, get up here. You're being lazy. You're being lazy. Yes, you are. You know you can do it. All right, come on. Let's see if I can get her in the picture. Joe, come on. Come on. Get up here. Get up here. Come on. Get up here. These people, they want to see you be a baby. Come on. Get up here. Come on. Here. She's being silly. This is the best dog ever. And it right. She better than Rin 1010. Lassie and Old Yeller. She ought to have her own TV show. Yeah, that's right. You ought to be on TV. She just loves to scratch her head. She's just a big old spoiled rotten brat. Yes, that's what you is. You was a good girl. Yes, you are. You was a good girl. Now get down. Go. Faith is believe in God. And God said to Cain yesterday in Genesis chapter four, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And so a scriptural biblical definition of doing well is living by faith. I hope everybody's doing well this morning. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter number six, Genesis chapter number six, 
we're going to start today. We're going to skip five because five just goes through uh, so and so and so and so begat and so and so begat and so and so and, and Seth and Cain and Eden. And do, 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 do. Chapter number five's got one place that I really like where Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. And that's a picture of the rapture. He's walking with God. God takes him. God took Enoch out before the flood, which is a picture of the rapture. We're going out before the judgment of God. And so you see those things. But look at chapter 6. Let's read Genesis chapter 6. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in and unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were old, were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. The end of all flesh. And God said to Noah, verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. And a window, oh, verse 16, a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breadth of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark and thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Of every living thing, all flesh, of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, Two of every sort shall thou come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded them, so did he. In Genesis chapter 6, you, you look and you find, uh, again, you find the Lord here is commanding and, and giving instruction to Noah to build the ark. Noah is here. You find that Noah has found a righteous man. He's found a just man. Uh, but before we get to that, just some people want to find things in the Bible that they can say, well, what does this mean? And they, they, they struggle with the unexplained the Bible says that, that we're not to focus on things that cause division. We're not to focus on things that, that cause strife and, and foolish and unlearned questions. The Bible says we're to avoid. And so there are, according to scripture, some foolish questions. <laughs> it, you look at this thing and, and a lot of people focus on the first part of Genesis chapter six, 
and all they want to do is find out who these daughters of, of men and, and, and who these uh, giants are that were in the earth, who are these sons of God. And there are two different schools of, of belief with, among good people, good preachers, some God-fearing, godly, good preachers teach that these were angels, the fallen angels, that came into the women and and the the the, the women of, of human women, angels that came into human women and had babies. There, there's some that believe that that produced this race of giants that the Bible says is in the earth. And so there, there, there's some people that teach that. The angels that were cast out of heaven that rebelled with Satan had relations with human women and produced giants in the earth. The Bible says that they were of old men of renown, um, these, these giants that were produced. Now we know that there were some giants in the earth. We know from the scripture that, that there were some uh, that were there down through time. But we also know that there's no other record there's some that teach. There's no other record of angels having any kind of relationship physically, sexually with men, with women. And so those things are, are, are impossible. Some say that this sons of God and daughters of men were a godly line that came from Cain or, or came from, from Seth, from, from the replacement for Abel that came from Seth and then an ungodly line that came from Cain. My question to you is, what difference does it make? <laughs> My question to you is, why are angels not having relationships with people now? Physical, sexual, I, I don't know. There's a lot of questions. What is clear and what is plain and what we need to focus on in the scripture is that men were evil. The Bible says God looked in verse five, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Man was wicked, man was evil. The, the Bible says it repented God. It made God sorry. It made God change his mind about creation. He, he, he said, I, I, it repented me. He said, I'm sorry I ever made them. I'm sorry I ever put them there. I'm sorry I ever allowed them to have the, the freedom and the free will and, and, and for them to do. But he, he said, I'm sorry that I made them. It repented me. And then the Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Was Noah sinless? No, Noah was not sinless. But he found grace, grace, and, and God looked at him. And so God chose Noah to build the ark. God chose Noah. He, here's what I want you to think about this morning as we look at this and, and study this. He told Noah what to do. He told Noah what was fixing to happen. He told Noah, judgment's coming. I'm going to destroy the earth. Now, now here's, what, here's what I want you to do. I want you to build a, a, a way out. I want you to build a way above. I want you to build a way that this flood that's coming. Now, now think about these things. At this time in scripture, we don't have any record of rain. There's not one word of rain. The Bible said the dew watered the ground in, in the early days of the garden. The Bible says that, that, that the dew watered the ground. There's not one record, one, one word of rain, much less flood. And now God tells Noah, you build an ark, you build a boat, you build a box big enough for two of every animal, you and your family, and for every uh, type of food that you're gonna need, all of those things. And personally, I believe the ark would have held anybody that wanted to get on. I believe the ark would have held everybody that was in 
in that, that region, in that area, which was everybody on earth at that time, because man had not scattered and filled the earth, that man was not gone around. There was just those people in that area from Noah, you, Adam and Eve, and then, then they begin to reproduce. And, and the Bible talks about in chapter five, these people, but they'd not gone off, they'd all. And, and so I believe the ark would have held anybody that wanted to get on. And so here God tells Noah, there's gonna be judgment, prepare a way for people to be delivered. Prepare a way for, for, for mankind and the animals to be delivered, to be carried through and, and to, to, to make it out. And so here you find that, that Noah begins to build. The Bible says, and, and, and we won't get it, it's God gives him the exact size, the exact, exact, uh, dimensions, exactly what he wants, and then exactly who he wants to go on there, exactly how many, exactly what he, he tells him to build three stories, to build the doors, to, to make the, the window in the top. <laughs> you get in the ark, the only place you can look is up. <laughs> can't see nothing out the sides. Can't look around. The, 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 this ark was built, if, if you want to look at it, this ark was built with, with no rudder, no steering wheel, no helm, no way to drive it, no way to pilot it. Just get in it. And and the Bible's going to say in chapter number seven that God shut the door. God shut them in. In verse number, chapter seven and verse 16, it said they went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut the door. They get in this thing. There's no, no windows. They can't see where they're going. They can't see where they've been. They get in. All they can do is look up. <laughs> and God begins to flood the world. Think about this. God gives them instruction. God gives them everything they need. I know I'm, I'm, I'm dragging in this, but I want you to, I want you to really see this. A, a major undertaking. Noah and his three sons. And, and how long does it take? I don't know, but it took a long time to build this ark. The Bible says in the New Testament that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He was declaring righteousness. He's exampling righteousness. He's preaching to the people while he's building. You can almost see that, 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 that never been a flood. They don't even know what a flood is. They don't even know what, why, and, and, and the whole world's mocking and laughing. And, and but Roger, don't get ahead of me. <laughs> don't get ahead of me. <laughs> All these things going on around him. Everybody, everybody's making fun of him. Everybody's laughing at him. Everybody's saying, you're doing what? I, I said for a long time that, that Noah looked and, and, and people were said, well, what you doing, Noah? He said, I'm building an ark. An ark, what's an ark? Never seen one. What's an ark? Well, it's a big old box. It's a big old boat. I'm going to build this boat. Why are you building it? No, I said, there's going to be a flood. A flood, what's a flood? What's a flood? Never seen a flood. Well, the, the rain, what rain? What's rain? Well, the rain's going to come. It's going to just pile up, pile up. The water's going to get deeper and deeper. And this thing's going to float. And everybody's going, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. But Noah kept building. And Noah kept, kept laboring. Now stay with me. If you go to chapter number six and verse number 22, the Bible said, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, him, so did he. He did what God said. Remember, we were talking about faith. If thou doest well, Cain, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest well. If, if you just did what I said, Cain, you, you'd be accepted. If you just obeyed by faith, Brother Roger, you would be accepted, Cain. Noah, here's what I want you to do. And the Bible said Noah did uh, all that God commanded him. He obeyed by faith. He did what God said. Faith is taking God at his word. Faith is obeying and doing what God said. Almost 2,000 years, over 2,000 years now. Through maybe 3,000 years since the flood. 4,000 years since the flood. I don't know. I, I didn't study it. You can find the time. You can figure it out. I just didn't do it. 
thousands of years now since the flood, God says there's judgment coming. There's judgment coming. I'm going to destroy all these ungodly. I'm going to destroy all this ungodliness. Oh, by the way, we're going to put a rainbow in the sky after the flood because he's never going to destroy the world by water again. But the Bible says in the New Testament that he's going to burn this one up. This earth and the heavens, the heavens, not God's heaven, but the heavens where the birds fly, where the stars are, where, where the sun and the moon are. The heavens are going to melt the earth. The elements are going to melt with fervent heat, the Bible says. God says there's judgment coming. God said this wickedness and this wicked world and this sin, he said, I'm going to destroy it. I, I'm going to burn it up. He says in the book of Revelation, I'm going to build a new heaven and a new earth, but, but, but I'm going to burn this one up. And all those people whose names are not written in the book of life, are going to be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. They're going to be done away with. They're going to be judged. The earth's going to be judged. The heaven's going to be judged. This wicked world's going to be judged. He said, but, 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 build, build, make a way out. Noah, build an ark. <laughs> but Roger, build a church. Jesus came and gave us the church. The church is the ark. Jesus is, is our ark. You get in Christ when you get saved. He's the one that's going to deliver us through the judgment and out of the judgment. He's the one that's going to take us out of here before the judgment comes. We're going to be caught up. <laughs> we don't drive this thing. We don't control this thing. <laughs> We are saved by faith, by obeying, by believing what God said. By believing what God said. Now we're building an ark. We're building the church. You say, well, I don't go to church. I don't need church. The Bible commands you not to forsake the assembly of yourselves together. But the church, the church is a called out assembly of people that have been called out of the world and, and together to serve the Lord. And so you have the church and all the same people is going to be called up to heaven, but you have the local church where, where we gather together and, and we're insulated from the world and we're not isolated, we're insulated from the world and we encourage one another, help one another, we serve one another while we wait on our deliverance, while the, the world is being judged. God's going to deliver us. Great picture of today in the Old Testament when you look at the ark. When you look at Noah. Noah built that. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get off this thing. We just about, we've been along the last two days. But let me show you a picture. Let's see if I can do this. We, we're on vacation. Somewhere on here there's a button. Look, right there. We're on vacation. I'm sitting at a table. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Roger. You too. We bought a coffee pot. I got all my stuff scattered out here on this dining room table. And Miss Sally said yesterday, I'm going somewhere now. Stay with me. Miss Sally said, I asked Miss Sally yesterday, I said, uh, you going to get in the pool? And we were talking about it. I said, you're on vacation. She said, are you, are you enjoying yourself? She said, I am. And so we were, I, even I got out yesterday and got in the pool for a little while. But I said, yep. She said, are you on vacation? I said, yep, I'm on vacation. She said, you can't tell it looking at that table. <laughs> All these books. I got college stuff. I got church stuff. Uh, we, we, I got my calendars out. I'm working on stuff coming up at the church and and working on stuff for, for Victor Baptist College. And but Roger, if you got somebody wanting to further their education, want somebody to know that the college is going wide open and uh, the night classes are going to be real good. Uh, we, we're excited about that. And then they're having day classes uh, five days a week 
at, at victory. It's going to be, it's, it's the, I believe, the best it's ever been. And uh, I believe it's going to be wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm working on college stuff. I'm working on church stuff. We're doing these devotions every morning. Sally said, what time are you setting your clock for? I said, I'm getting up early. I said, we'll do, do devotions at 7.30. And she said, even on vacation? <laughs> yeah. You know what I told her? You know what I told her? I've been on vacation since 1992. That's the way I see it. <laughs> That's the way I feel. I've been on vacation since, since 1992. You say, what well, happened in 1992? Excuse me, 1993. What happened in 93? March of 93, I left the pup mill for the last time. <laughs> I left the pup mill for the last time to move to North Augusta, South Carolina and go to Bible college and serve the Lord. I've been on vacation since 1993. You see all these books and all this stuff, and I, this is vacation. I have not had to punch in at the uh, clock. I have not had to work a midnight shift. I have not had to, to smell that chlorine and, 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 and <laughs> the undertaker couldn't wipe the smile off my face. <laughs> this is vacation. Greatest thing I've ever got to do. Praise the Lord. Hey, I hope y'all have a great day. I hope you do well. <laughs>